Hello, this is Lukas Zagotal from Reddit Satellite Team and in this short video I'd like to demonstrate uh, Satellite 6.8 uh, provisioning uh, S390 uh, VMs on uh, IBM Z LPAR hypervisor running libvirt. Uh, so here I have Satellite 6.8 with a couple of patches, uh, three in fact. And there will be a um, post in the Foreman community uh, discourse about uh, all the patches. Uh, two of them apply cleanly. One needs a, a small manual change. And uh, this enables the provisioning workflow I'm going to show you. So uh, here I have um, a system with uh, with uh, one smart proxy or capsule and the satellite terms. Uh, it's just an all-in-one installation and uh, the capsule is uh, running a TFTP feature. Now, um, there's a, this is pretty much standard installation of satellite. There's nothing really extra here except those patches which will make it into the Foreman 2.5 uh, very likely so uh, this should land in uh, the next satellite version uh, and then, then there is a uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, running it's actually Fedora on a IBM mainframe running um, uh, running libvirt and so I have a compute resource here which uh, has, you know, a uh, QMOSSH um, URL to the to, to the system, and then uh, there's a couple of VMs there, and I have defined a compute profile small, which is like one CPU, two gigs of memory. Now, one extra thing is that the capsule, this capsule actually. Uh, has a TFTP feature turned on, but because satellite or foreman can be only installed on Intel and the hypervisor runs on uh, S390, obviously, uh, and we can't deploy, although it could be possible to deploy smart proxy there, you know, downstream satellite capsule can only be deployed on Intel. So there is one um, workaround, the var lib TFTP boot directory on satellite or on the capsule, the capsule is built in, so it's the satellite server. The TFTP directory has been mounted over via via NFS from the hypervisor. So there is a simple export on the hypervisor, and this directory uh, is being mounted to the varlib TFTP directory directly. It works even in in S Linux. There are no changes required. Um, just make sure that the, those servers are close, so we like the the actually actual downloading of the uh, kernel and the run disk is you know works fine. Um, and then uh, what I have for from the infrastructure here, I have a I have I have domain which is kind of a dummy domain. It's called libvirt. It's nothing you know associated to it. I mean. Um, um, in my setup, I won't be doing any DNS orchestrations, but it could be done, of course, as long as there is there's a capsule, DNS capsule associated, and I have a subnet. Called the Vert One Hundred Two Net Twenty Two, which is just um, a regular, you know, IPv4 subnet. I'm using internal DB assignments. Uh, for this one, although THCP would work as well, and I'm using a static boot mode, uh, so because I wanted to test static provisioning, but the workflow will be actually PC-like, but the actually the provision system and then Anaconda will actually assign from the pool here from the uh, internal DB from satellites pool. Uh, so I have associated this domain, so this domain, Alivert, and then only TFTP capsule needs to be associated because 
you know that's all you need to do in this workflow you can optionally do uh, uh, dns however dhcp management won't actually work because in this setup the uh, hypervisor the vms will be installed in the hypervisor libvirt uh, virtual network which is by default called default uh, 122 and uh, it will be using the um, or in my case i'm using uh, dns masks the built-in dhcp server so there's no management there we had a we had plugin, a plugin called smart proxy ver, ver sh but this was uh, discounted um, uh, it was uh, you know removed because it was it was problematic um, um. so so in general you, you only want to have tftp here maybe dns but not thcp uh, only if you were running uh, capsule within the libvirt environment using some kind of a dhcp you know uh, forward or proxy uh, gateway then only then you could have a full DHCP uh, orchestration but for simplicity I'm really using um, DNS mask within the uh, uh, libvirt and uh, just TFTP orchestration and then static assignments for those VMs um, right um, I guess that's it now the workflow is that um, um, s390 um, livered firmware uh, recently I mean in uh, 2018 so two years two years ago uh, received a couple of patches that enabled a very nice uh, pixie-like provisioning workflow it works in a way that uh, if DHCP server returns address uh, sorry it returns uh, the file name option as a directory so uh, in our case uh, I've configured the DNS mask to return a slash just the root directory of the TFTP environment it will actually search for the for pixie linux cfg directory and then within this directory it will search for a uh, mac address of the you know booting uh, machine and uid you know following the pixie linux you know pattern and if it finds uh, such a file and then it falls back to the default uh, configuration file and then it it has a built-in parser which is very limited but it can actually parse uh, simple simple statements like the most important ones are kernel init ROM disk and append so these three first three lines matching this pattern will actually be used then kernel and init ROM disk will be downloaded you know there's some you know uh, finesse uh, involved like concatenating these together and you know setting some kernel parameters but it will do this automatically and then it will also in include a pen line and boot from there so we can take the advantage um, of this and then we can boot uh, you know just uh, with these three patches in f uh, three projects were patched uh, libvirt fog which uh, fixed some um, things uh, for s390 platform foreman a couple of patches for handling of uh, the installation medias and some templates were slightly modified one of these changes were for example um, this one we we needed uh, in it rd line which which is on intel you don't need to specify that you just uh, put the init ram disk address to the append line and a couple of others uh, so um, and in Catello as well uh, to recognize uh, kickstart uh, architecture and as long as you have these patches uh, you know Foreman can actually do the management of the Pixie Linux configuration very nicely so the workflow will be very similar to what uh, Foreman users are used to work with it's pretty much the Pixie Linux 
BIOS, I'd say, in quotes, uh, management. So you build a host, you start a, basically satellite or a foreman can actually you know go to the compute resource, start the VM, it will boot from network, and having the configuration already there, the Anaconda and interim disk will be already downloaded, and, and this is mapped via the TFTP, uh, sorry, the NFS TFTP um, directory. So all the files will be present there, so the VM will download these start up Anaconda, Anaconda will install the system and then reboot into the installed system. Now, there is one more you know, problem. On S390, uh, there is one limitation, and that is um, the, in the libvirt, there's no boot order support, uh, meaning that um, for S390 VMs in libvirt, you can only define a single entry, like boot from network or boot from uh, hard disk. There's no, nothing like a, a boot order, boot from network, if, if that fails, boot from hard disk, which Foreman utilized to actually, you know, you know, all the hosts are usually set to boot from network only. And then uh, the, according to the Pixie configuration, the host is either booted into installer to do reprovisioning or provisioning, or it falls back to the hard drive and boot from hard drive. This can be done on an S390. However, there is a nice, uh, nice workaround. Uh, I've built a Drawcut image uh, that actually is very small and it boots up and it does just one thing. It basically reconfigures libvirt firmware to boot from, net, uh, from dry, hard drive and then it reboots and if that's a soft reboot uh, it will survive so the the host will actually boot from uh, from hard drive and this is very quick it uses the uh, tool from from s390 uh, tools package which is in in fedora and rel uh, so this is the command actually change uh, IP, ipl ccv 0000 and then and it just reboots, right? So, so one of the changes in Foreman is actually that the, the default Pixie Linux local boot template has a, has a statement now. If our architecture is 390, uh, then you know provide this kind of a block. Just you know boot the reboot kernel in a run disk and reboot kernel in a uh, kernel images with the you can configure actually. The, uh, change re e IPL command, but this can be this can be commented out uh, by default. It just picks the first device, and to do that, you actually need to to build this Drakat and this GitHub repository. If you search for Drakat reboot S three ninety X, there's a GitHub repository where you have uh, you have actually it's pretty simple. It's a Drakat module. And this is the init uh, init script that it essentially does the does the uh, reboot. And uh, if you scroll down, there are uh, instructions how to build the image. Just install uh, S390 utils, utils base uh, package, and then um, you know uh, build the Drakat image with a reboot S390x module. That's the one that is in this repository, and that's all. All you need to do this on uh, on uh, on S three ninety system. You can't do this on on uh, Intel, obviously, because you want uh, the S three ninety kernel, and you, you need to copy those into the TFTP directory as well. So I have all of that here. So let's create a host now. So. Uh, I have a host group called L8 LPAR, which essentially um, I have a, I have actually um, synced uh, Reddit Enterprise Linux for IBM Z uh, 8.3 uh, base OS and uh, up upstream uh, repositories. This created me uh, uh, this created me um, uh, operating system system of course. I have uh, created this um, uh, libvirt compute resource. I've created a small compute profile. So I'm selecting library, default organization view, virtual machine is one, you know, 10 gigabytes, small. 
and Red Hat 8.3 provided some password as well. And uh, there is a one network interface with the uh, Lidbird network domain and the uh, and uh, uh, subnet called one 122. Now the console actually will not work. If I click on console, it will, it will, it will print an error because on mainframe there is no such thing as a graphical console and so therefore SPICE or VNC console which we have implemented in JavaScript here won't work. However, I have this host, uh, I, have, uh, I have a cockpit running on the host and so I can use that. I've installed the I've installed the virtual machines support in a cockpit, which is awesome plugin. And um, as you can see, it does support both VNC Spice and uh, console, or like serial console, which is great. So uh, and it works great. So uh, I'll be using that to actually monitor the installation. So as you can see, the, it was very quick. The VM was created, the VM um, booted from network. It's actually it's actually ignoring uh, the, there's no Pixie Linux involved. It's not, it doesn't load any Pixie Linux.0 file. If you have, if you've provided uh, Pixie Linux.0, it would fail because that's Intel platform, Intel binary, of course. Instead, it was actually searching the Pixie Linux CFG directly and it was uh, parsing this. The parser is really limited. It prints out some, uh, if you have uh, like, uh, complex menu, it will print some you know uh, warnings that uh, many commands will be ignored, and it will basically pick the first, the very first um, entry from from the Pixelings menu, which is totally fine. It works great, and then um, you know it boots up Anaconda, and then the rest is completely the same. You know there is Anaconda. Uh, template, uh, it's called Pixie Linux default template, which renders a kickstart. There's a kickstart with token, so that Anaconda starts up, downloads the kickstart. It will do the automatic auto pro partitioning, and you know, it will deploy, you know, Red Hat as uh, we all know, uh, in the satellite or foreman environments. Um, and um, it's pretty much all. I'll, I'll wait. You can pr probably skip the video a little bit because this will take time. And then what we'll see is Anaconda will, you know, automatically switch to boot from a hard drive and it will reboot and it will, it will, it will immediately reboot into the installed system. So this works fine uh, this the first reboot don't need the anaconda reboot uh, sorry the, the drucker reboots in its run disk which i've built uh, so the first boot is just you know direct but once you reboot the system again or once you shut down the system and power it on again uh, then it will boot from a network grab the drucker image the Dracut image will reset the CCV firmware settings and reboot into the into the install system. So we'll we'll see that in a minute. Excuse me. If I switch over back to uh, to satellite, you know, um, powering on, powering off the, the the VM will work. You know, it's just another libvirt uh, uh, VM. Uh, the the connection is. Uh, SSH QMO, which does not perform great on a long over long distance. So it's I advise that um, a satellite is close to the hypervisor, um, and um, 
libvirt compute resource is a little bit limited uh, in this feature set. It, we, we do recommend to use uh, overt or Reddit enterprise virtualization or VMware. These, these two compute uh, resources have many more capabilities and features. However, um, libvirt can can be used and utilized to uh, boot uh, and provision systems. Now we can see it's uh, actually rebooting and we have, uh, we'll have, uh, we'll have uh, uh, fresh uh, Reddit uh, 8.3 running on a uh, libvirt uh, in uh, S390 uh, XL par. So here we have it. Let's try quickly if I can actually, I hope the password. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. So there, 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 there we have it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down the system. So power off. Yeah. I'm sure this will do the soft uh, soft power off though. It's a safe uh, safe operation. So the system is now stopped, and I'm going to power on the system. As you will see, the system will boot now from uh, you know the, from the Pixie Linux configuration. It will download the Jocket image, reconfigure CCV fiber, boot from hard drive, and then it will you know, present you with a login screen. So now it's happening. Uh, it's very quick. So leave your environment local. Everything is pretty, pretty quick. The rocket image is very small. It's just a few megabytes. Uh, and that's it. Um, so yeah, this is how you provision VMs uh, in six uh, S390 environment um, thanks for listening thanks for watching and uh, see you in a bit